good people. Welcome back. Truth Prescription. Episode number, I don't remember. <laughs> Do you ever remember? <laughs> I, I, I often don't. I often, my, my producer's in Australia right now, and so she normally tells me ahead of time, oh, this is episode number such and such. So I don't have that, you know, crutch. Okay. So now I'm... Okay. Uh, once again, right? He said, "Do you ever know?" <laughs> Sometimes I'll like record it wrong. I'll be like, "Yeah, this is episode twenty-five." My producer's like, "No, this is episode number thirty-five." Okay. Anyway, so today I have the <laughs> honor and pleasure of uh, interviewing Mr. Alfonso J. Harris. Alfonso, <laughs> better, better, Alton <laughs> J. You. Harris. Although, Although I do believe I had an uncle Alfonso somewhere. No, I had okay. an uncle Alton. Okay. Who was Alfonso? My cousin's Alfonso. Okay. Well, you know, you're giving me this Denzel training day vibe. <laughs> so that's what Al- Alfonso, you know, uh, Detective Alfonso. Anyway. Okay. Um, I'm not going to kill you. <laughs> <laughs> Yet. <laughs> Yet. So, so Jay has been at ESPN how many years now, Jay? Oh, I, I got 16, but I think that's wrong. Uh, Yeah, 16. Yeah. It is 16. 16 okay. Is, uh, February 16. Yeah. So he's been on ESPN for 16 years. He's hosted shows like Sports Center, Outside mm-hmm. the Lines, NFL Live, Baseball Tonight, Cold Pizza, First Take, wow. Friday Night, wow. <laughs> ESPN, wow. Wow. ESPN Sports Saturday or Sunday on, or, on uh, ABC. Mm-hmm. And um, he came from he grew up professionally as he says he grew up yeah. professionally in Pritt, pittsburgh absolutely um doing news because mm-hmm. traditional news on radio and television mm-hmm. on radio i think you were on the american urban radio network right yes. it used to be called sheridan community sheridan broadcasting sheridan network. broadcasting yes. and then he worked for so w- i worked with my good buddy april ryan <laughs> april ryan who's still there at american uh, isn't she still i mean white, she's a white house correspondent she's CNN. a white house but sh- doesn't she still have a show on American Urban Radio Network? Probably. Probably. Okay. Yeah. Good lady. Um, I, I got a funny story about her, but I'll tell it later. Okay. Um, and then also uh, WPGH TV. Fox 53. That's 10 right. o'clock news, which no longer exists. Yes. In that form. Right. Right. They w- they The station closed. Yeah, about a year after I left. <laughs> right. Good timing. Yeah. <laughs> They almost messed that up. We'll talk about that later. Yes, yes. So uh, he's a graduate of Old Dominion University and a member of Alpha Phi Alpha uh, uh, Fraternity Incorporated. Oh, six. Uh, which I always say I didn't uh, pledge in college. I went to Morgan State University. I didn't pledge. You went to Morgan? I did. I like Morgan. Thank you. I did. Uh, a lot of great brothers, uh, Alpha brothers I met there. That was the only fraternity I would have pledged. Okay. Plus, I have a godfather who's an Alpha. Okay. Uh, Jimmy Myers, who actually worked with um, with Jim Brown at, at ESPN back in, like, 75. He was, right. like, the second or third black anchor ever to uh, – I interviewed him uh, some months ago. Okay. But anyway, I so mean, I can I can pledge you up if you like. <laughs> oh, right now, <laughs> yeah. right now, <laughs> on camera. Oh yeah, we can get this thing going. <laughs> yeah, you know, I, I got to work in the next couple of days. You know, I need my bones and joints to work properly. What are you, you know? talking about? None of that stuff happens, <laughs> right? Ever? No. Easy. No, what is that? No. Can I can I make a kind of a joke? Yes, of course. Um, I, I. <laughs> I, <laughs> people talk about hazing and yeah. things like that. Yeah, uh, I'm a proponent of hazing. Okay, I am. Um, I'm not mad at that. Good <laughs> mental make you think hazing okay. because I look back and I remember things that I just when I had to use my mind mm. and go places I didn't think my mind would go. Yeah, I mean anybody can do push-ups or whatever, blah blah blah. Right. But when you're forced to think, yeah. Like situationally and whatnot, yeah, that stays with you. Okay, and I I enjoyed that. Okay, so well, I, that's I, not a joke. Yeah, yeah, that's serious business. Yeah, yeah. You talked in one of your interviews about how um, you learned that, um, particularly if you learn from a golfer that ninety uh, percent of of golf is mental, and so is the other ten percent. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so it's like you know that stuff is translatable. Yeah, you know it really is. Yeah, yeah. All right, cool. So. Uh, we're gonna jump right into the truth prescription uh, for my guests, for for my listeners, my uh, usual listeners. You know the premise. For anybody listening for the first time, I'll just say it to simplify it: that we ignore truth as humans. We do. Why? Because it's uncomfortable. We right. don't like it. It makes it makes us feel bad. And most successful people have learned that once you accept those truths, 
you're able to break through, get past, and move on to high levels. So I'm going to start with uh, with like Jay. Does, does this suit make me look fat? No, your fat makes you look fat. That's the truth that right. I wanted to ignore. I wanted to blame it on the suit. Right. Or blame it on the club when I hit that ball in the woods. One the club. <laughs> it right. was me. Right, it was your skill level. <laughs> yes. So on October 24th, uh, Jay, you posted something on your Instagram. I did. Which, which is so. Are uh, you, did you stalk me on my Instagram? <laughs> what, what did I post? It's called research. Okay. All right. Um, you posted something that's very apropos to, to this interview and this show. Okay. You posted, you said, uh, if the truth makes you uncomfortable, mm -hmm. don't blame the truth. Blame the lie that made you comfortable. Oh, yeah, I forget. I think yes. I reposted that. I yes, it was a repost. It. Yeah. It was a repost. And I thought that was really, really good. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So you want to do personal professional first? Uh, let's go professional because okay. I can't <laughs> really figure out or I, c I don't know which personal truth where I want to go with that. We'll start right. pro with professional. Professional. Yeah. Okay. Um, all right. So you, you tell stories for a living. Yes, so I do. So tell us a story. Lead us down that road. Show us how uh, you ignored the truth and then what happened when you got to the other side. I don't know if I ignored the truth so okay. much. I didn't know you it. You didn't know it. That that's a, that's a great point. I was actually thinking about that recently with just the show premise that I think sometimes we don't ignore. We're not aware yes. of the truth. Yeah. Sometimes we are aware and we do ignore it. Right. But then there's the other side where you come into awareness right. and then you have a choice. Right. You can accept it. <laughs> you can ignore it. Yes. So proceed. I'm sorry. Uh, you're right. I, I was doing radio in, in Pittsburgh yeah. at the uh, Sheridan. Okay. The local <sighs> station, the flagship station, WAMO, WAMO Radio. Okay. Uh, and we got a new program director, and his name was Hurricane Dave Smith. Okay, yeah. Hurricane. Yeah. All right. Good brother. <laughs> Good brother. In Atlanta now. Good okay. brother. Okay. Okay. So when program directors come into a radio station, um, the, the the good ones listen to the air staff that they, they have before you just blow it up and bring all your new people in. Okay. Um, sometimes that's not cost effective and you have to work with what you have. Right. We had a really good staff. Okay. And and he liked our staff. Okay. Didn't necessarily like me. Oh. Doing news okay. in the morning. Interesting. Yeah, okay. it was one of those, um, <clears throat> who the blank is Jay Harris? <laughs> <laughs> now, I don't remember exactly the year in the 90s. I started there in 91, so I was, I was a few years in. I was, it was my first full-time professional media job. Okay, wow. Okay, so, full-time. Yeah, full-time. Because you had done some weekend stuff, part-time part stuff before. Part-time in Virginia, yeah. Um, that's another story. Yes. Remind me of that one. Okay. <laughs> so, um we had he called me into his office and we had a meeting and basically he told me he's like bruh no yeah what you're doing no <laughs> and you need to fix it wow cuz i can't i can what you're doing i can't have that on my i can't have that on my radio station wow did he give you specific like points like p points of uh not reflection but things that like technical things cuz it's easy for somebody to say right. you know what i don't like your shirt probably right? okay i don't remember them now <clears throat> Because I, I'm, I'm, I'm probably inside going, oh, my God, he hates me. <laughs> what am I going to do? <laughs> so I promptly went back and listened to myself mm. critically. I okay. think I listened to myself just listening to myself. Right. But I listened to myself critically. And I'm like, oh, my God, I'm horrible. Mm. I wasn't horrible. But I wasn't as good as I could have been. Okay. I just was not. Mm. So... Um, the things, and I, I don't remember the technical things that he told mm -hmm. me to do. Sure. But I did them point by point. Got it. Made a point of whatever he said, that's what I'm going to do. And he was right. Mm. It made me better. Mm. Okay. And I okay. kept the job, <laughs> right. which was most important. <laughs> right. Um, and th that's my due to this day. And yeah. I appreciated that. I needed to hear that at that time. Okay. I mm. need to hear it now. I've been doing this a long time. Yeah. And I always tell young folks when I talk to them, my goal is to be better tomorrow than I was today because right. I know I can be. Right. I didn't have a perfect show yesterday. I know there are things I can do better. Mm. So tomorrow is going to be that day. Mm. I know I'm never going to have the perfect show. I'm just going to keep chasing it. Okay. And that's fine. Yeah. The fun is in the chase. It's so interesting because you had a choice at that point, right? You could have said, 
you screw you. Absolutely. Uh, you're wrong, mm-hmm. and I'm I'm great, and right. I'm out. Right. Um, but you chose to to listen. Yeah. Um, that's not really the you know <laughs> the characteristic of a young man. You know. So where where do you think you got that from? Oh goodness, probably. And then that my, leads that leads into the personal. Go ahead. I mean, probably my parents, my grandparents. Okay. Um, because you know, parents and your grandparents, they always got something to say. That yeah. you need to listen to, <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> whether you want to listen to it or not. Right. Um, and I, I was still, I've always been the kind of person that likes to learn, so okay. I was still in learning <clears throat> mode. Okay. Um. So he caught me at the right time. Okay. Perfect. Perfect. All right. Um. Now the personal. I'm gonna help guide you a little bit, and okay. if you don't have anything personal, it's okay. Okay. Um. Uh, first of all, you've been married a long time. Yes. Right. Yes. So I'm sure there are a lot of little nuggets of of, uh, of knowledge in that experience. Yes. Um, you have that word. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes, dear. Yes. 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 Exactly. It's Absolutely. The, right. <laughs> right. With a smile. Yes. Exactly. Yes. Brother, let me tell you. <laughs> <laughs> let me tell you. I'm just four and change in, and I'm like, that is that word is my best friend. <laughs> I'm serious, man. It is so crazy. You know, you just got to get that ego out of there sometimes. Um, obviously, you had you you had a. Uh, it was clear. I've never met your dad, but just clear from what I read online that you guys had a really close relationship. That's my man. Um, uh, obviously, I know your parents got divorced. He mm-hmm. lived in Norfolk. Y- your mom was in um, Chapel Hill. Mm-hmm. Um, so you know, there's there's a few things in there. He's the um, reason I chose the Old Dominion. Your dad, right, yeah, because he was in Norfolk. Was in Norfolk. Yeah. You wanted to spend time with him. You made yeah. that choice. Yeah. Um, it's funny. This is I'm digressing right now, but those like cute, your old cute baby pictures in your mom's house. <laughs> Dude, you look. Whoever's listening to this show right now, as you're listening, Google Jay Harris baby pictures. He literally looks just like a, his himself as a baby. I mean, yeah, it, I it's 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 freaky. <laughs> I mean, the nose, the mouth, I the have smile, teeth now. The t- yeah, and a little yeah. more hair. Right. But other than that, yeah, yeah it's exactly the same. Yeah. So, you know, um, anytime you have relationships, there are always points of, of, of um, clarity, mm-hmm. things that, um, that we learn about ourselves. I remember the psychologist, I heard him once say, if you think you're evolved, go spend a weekend with your parents. <laughs> you yeah. know? So, because they push all kind of different buttons and things, and there's opportunities for growth there. Absolutely. Um, but I think, you know, that, that's, that's kind of where I think maybe you could see if you could pull something out. If you can't, we'll move on. It's all good. I know it's tough. <clears throat> um. Well, there's, there's. I learned a tr- well. I think it's a truth. Okay. Because I grew up with a lot of um, alcoholism in my family. Interesting. Um, okay. Yeah, my dad for years. Interesting. Um, <coughs> and uncle was real bad. And yeah. And some other folks. Yeah. Um. Now, did you? Did, your dad was a war veteran, right? He was, uh, he didn't go to the war. He stayed stateside. But he, he was in the military. He was in the military. He was okay. in, the, in the Army. Okay. My right. uncle is a Vietnam, Korea, World War II, maybe World War II, Korea, not Vietnam. Okay. Uh, but yeah. Okay. So they had some of that. Because those guys, I mean, you know. But that did, I don't think that was it. <clears throat> okay. All right. I, I don't. Okay. It was some other things going on. Yeah. I just think it was like, hey, let's go get a drink. Okay. Yeah, and let's okay. go get two. And, and three. Oh, oh, my goodness. Right. Yeah. And you don't drink. I do not. And that's Do you that's, think that's why? Oh, that's absolutely why. <laughs> Interesting. That's absolutely why. Interesting. Because as confident as I am to be able to handle certain situations, I don't think I'd handle that one really well. Mm. Even though I might think I would handle it, yeah. I'm not even going to try. Mm. Because it was enough to do things to some very strong men and women in my family. Who am I to think that I'm better than that so yeah. i'm just gonna leave it alone right right okay okay you were you were going to what you thought you learned and i i, I d- redirected your thought i'm sorry no that was it that was it I that you realized that the alcohol yeah okay yeah. interesting i was just listening to an interview um Torre interviewed this guy named jay smooth who's like um they call him like a social intellectual mm-hmm. but he was saying that he finds that he thinks that a lot of men especially black men we spend a lot of our times trying to not be what our fathers were mm-hmm. and i don't know if i agree with 100% but i could see how i think parenting teaches you two things it teaches you what to do and it mm-hmm. teaches you what not to do right 
with what you saw, right? And I I can definitely see that from my own experience. So you took from your own experience that I'm not I'm not messing with the bottle. No, I'm not messing <laughs> because with because it's, it's knocked it's knocked down some some big folk. Yeah, no, I'm not messing with that. I will I will take the work ethic. Okay, yeah. There you go. It, it, it took me a minute to to get that too. My mother yeah. used to <laughs> Saturday morning, man. I had a hard week at school. I ain't trying to get up on a Saturday morning right, right. and go down behind the tractor, my grandfather, and pick potatoes out the ground. Yeah. Until she yelled at me to get out of the bed and call me lazy. Yeah. Because yeah, my yeah. grandfather was, you know, sixty, seventy years old, out there doing his thing. Yeah. My my uncle, who's the, the war veteran, he's ninety seven. They had to make him stop getting on the tractor. Wow. Because he would wow. still do it. Wow. To this day, he would still do it. Mm. If they if they if, if they if let they, him. Yes. Yeah. Um, but yeah, my, my dad was a longshoreman and he would work <clears throat> days on the waterfront. Mm. I mean, there's no punch the clock. It's like the ship coming in, you got to unload it. And however long it takes is how long you're going to be there. <sighs> yeah, wow. It could be cold. It could be warm, whatever. Yeah. So longshoreman, And that's a longshoreman. Like, that's a good job. It's like, a, really it's a job. well-paying job and well-respected job. Yeah. My youngest brother is a longshoreman now. My really? dad got him in. Yeah, because it's difficult. Those things are unionized, right? A I, lot yeah, of them. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. Cool. Well, let's ju- let's jump into some some questions. Um. So you, like I said earlier, you're a storyteller, uh, but at, at at heart, you're really a communicator, right? I like it, to it, think so. It, I hope uh, so. Yes, you are. I'm telling you. Uh, <laughs> Why? Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> In your estimation, what makes a good communicator, and how do those skills translate to personal life? I think you have to be just willing to relate. Um, a, 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 it is not. It's not that difficult to do what I do. I don't think. Okay. I just put myself in a position to do it. I put myself in front of a camera. I put myself in front of a microphone years ago because there was something that I had that I thought other folks should know. Mm. And it was a story that I've been working on all day. Um, so mm. in <coughs> order to tell that, there's some things that I have to do. Even when I was in, in, in school and you get in front of the class and talk, people don't like to do that. Right. Yeah. But if you have something to say and the only way people are going to hear it is if you get up in front of the class, then you've got to go get up in front of the class. Yeah. And that's mm. just not a fear that you can succumb to, mm. because it's 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 imaginary anyway. You're just manufactured <laughs> fear. Right. So just let it go. Yeah. Just let it go. Yeah, that's great. That's so true. If you have something to say, I just did a talk on fear, um, and I started it out by saying false evidence appearing real. So you're right. It's just you know it, we just it's just completely made up the whole thing. Yep. It is. But I think the point except of snakes. <coughs> except that's real. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yes, that's that's legitimate. That is legitimate. Yeah. Or, or grizzly bears in your backyard. Grizzly bears in the backyard. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We don't want that anymore. No. No. So, um, you you cite uh, Brian Gumbel, and Peter Jennings as sort of like your all time favorites. Um, what qualities do you think make them great journalists, and what have you taken from them that you've added to your own what repertoire? Bryant, um, when I was growing up, watching him on TV was like the best interviewer Mm. he would ask a question and his follow-up is why why (laughs) and why is a great question yeah it's it's one word it there's nothing (laughs) it's neutral there you can't you don't know where it's coming it's just why Mm. and it puts the onus on who you're asking the why to to come up with a why and 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 to work and give you an answer um when i watch interviews we uh, there's a gentleman who used to be at espn is john sawatsky Mm -hmm interview guru he's my guy mm. i mean i don't I don't know if he taught bryant but he could teach everybody simple who what where when why the stuff you learn in school yeah those make for the great questions and an interview is not about me if you don't remember i'm there it was a great interview the interview interview was about the interviewee yeah so i'm supposed to ask the who and the, and the what's and, and the where's and the when and the why and and then what happened to follow up the story hmm. and no yes or no questions oh yeah i hate yes or no qu- and terrible. I, when i'm watching television 
my wife will tell you I can't watch television because there's an, th- depending on the the, the interview because I'm like ah stop doing that <laughs> right why did you do that well they do that to sports guys all the time I mean they set up the they set up the question and basically lead them to the answers so you guys play really good defense tonight what do you think was the reason that you were successful exactly thank you very what kind much. of question is that exactly <laughs> exactly how about what do you like about how you played tonight right right or what do you think you know, what factors do you think contributed to this, your success or whatever? Why'd you win? Right. Yeah. yeah. You know, uh, what was that? <laughs> I'm sure you've seen that Russell Westbrook when the guy asked him. He said so, he, he did one of those type of questions mm-hmm. and Russell <laughs> looked at him. Did you see he looked at him incredulously like, what? I don't remember. Then he used an expletive and just said, hey, y'all – N words is crazy, and he just sat. He just sat. He just sat down, and there was probably nobody black in the room. <laughs> it's like Russell Westbrook, classic. Russ is my guy. He keeps it real. It yeah, lets you know. Yeah, he don't. He don't play. Yeah, and I think journalists need more of that because I think they got more of that negative feedback. Agreed. <laughs> they would craft it. It would take some more time to craft the questions. Agreed. <laughs> when I when I do stuff with with um, younger kids and they ask me a yes or no question, I'll mm-hmm. give them a yes or no answer, mm-hmm. and then I'll wait. Mm. And see what they do. Right, right. Te- go, teach it. Yeah, yeah. That's why I did that. You ask a yes or no question. If someone says yes, and then people get the <sighs> reputation, oh, he's a horrible interview. He's just this and that. No, you asked a bad question. Right. You didn't give him a chance to give you an answer. Right. So that's what you get. <laughs> what you, you get in, what you put out. Yeah. All right. Um. Uh, Let's see what I got. What I got next for you? Oh, so your parents, as we we've spoken previously, your parents were divorced. Mm-hmm. Um, you've been married for twenty eight years. Mm-hmm. Um, what's your secret to longevity in marriage? And other than the word yes, dear. <laughs> and uh, I don't know. <laughs> what do you What do you take from those experiences? I don't, probably her having patience with me. Having having patience with you. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Did was there anything you saw in your parents split that you took and would, would have been and been able to use in your own experience? <laughs> No, because that happened a little bit before I was born. Oh, and okay. I didn't see wow, it. it was really early. Okay. Yeah, I was five. Okay. And I really don't remember it. Okay. Now, my mom did get remarried, and I saw that. Okay. And that was just, um, it was a mess. Okay. Yeah. Okay. There was there there there's a lot of domestic issues there. Okay. So um, again, learning what not to do. Absolutely. <laughs> <Okay>. Absolutely. <laughs> um, yeah. Okay. Last question for you. So <clears throat> you were sort of at a really a really low point uh, in your professional career at one point. Um, you couldn't find a job. And you said, you know what, let me try grad school. Grad, <laughs> grad, grad school told you, hell no, see you later, nice try, think yeah. again. But you decided to go ahead and push forward again. You know, what, what do you think was it that made you just say, all right, well. My dad. It was your dad. Yeah, okay. I showed him the letter from the University of Maryland after they said no. And yeah. he's like, well, son, I guess you got to get back out there and try it. Mm. Like yeah, I guess you're right. Yeah, and so yeah. I did. Yeah, and you and and doing that basically caused everything that's happened since. <laughs> Great. Okay. Uh, you ready to do some yes or BS? Yes. Yes, BS. <laughs> <laughs> what am I say? No, un- man. Un- un- I'm con- done. Unconvinced. Unconvinced. All right, here we go. All right. Number one. Okay. Kaepernick will play in the NFL again. I don't think so. Mm. Oh, so I'm supposed to say BS. That's BS. That's BS. Okay. Yeah. I don't. I don't think he so. should. Okay. But I don't believe he will. Okay. And number two, Melo will play in the NBA again. <laughs> 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 and why are we laughing? <laughs> I love the brother. He got a great game, but no, it's, it's over. Yeah, unfortunately, it's over. Yeah. All right, this one I just thought about and write down, uh, but I'm gonna I'm gonna give this one to you. Number th- number two A. R. Kelly will perform again, <laughs> make another album again. Yeah, probably. Yeah, and and people will buy it. Mm. Yeah. People will buy it. Yeah. I'm not even going to get into R. Kelly conversation right now. Number three. Okay. Jay Harris is a better writer than public speaker. Hmm. That's a good one. I have to say yes. Hmm. Because I like to write my stuff down yeah. before I go out there and do it. Do one, you do you write it down and then memorize it? 
Or no, they put I, it on a teleprompter. They no, work. you mean at work? At work, yeah, yeah. No, it goes. everything goes on the prompter. I so, don't use it all the but time. But you write it. Yeah. You write your own stuff. Yes. They put it on the prompter. Yeah, well, the okay. the, the technology of the computer. Not, right. Yeah. Right, it yeah. just goes up there. Yeah. Okay. But um, I don't use it all the time. Okay. Well, I mean, we'll, we'll all, you know, use our research notes and drop them in the page if we assigned a game. Um, rockets and clippers, and we'll go to the the post game notes and whatever research is done, and all the stats, and and dump them in the page, and look at my highlight, and try to figure out which stats would go with the way they did the highlight to try and Got tell it. a complete story. Got it. Um, but all that stays in the teleprompter, and okay. I don't use it all. Got it. Okay. If I have it on camera, I'll, I'll read it directly um, into the camera. Okay. Okay. Cool. Number four. This one has a made up word in it. All right. Fatherhood is easier than husbandhood. Yeah. 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 You want to you want to expound on that or no? Uh <coughs> <laughs> Father <coughs> You have these little people, right? Yeah. And you know what you need to do. First of all, you need to keep them alive. <laughs> <laughs> Number 1. <laughs> Stay alive. <laughs> yes, yes. So you know, and you you listen for these cues: the hunger cues, the the wet cues, the mm-hmm. change my diaper cues. Yeah. And then you you learn as they get older what different cues fit what different stages they're in. Yeah. When our son was younger, and we were I forget we were in Pittsburgh. I think we were in the mall, and I had on my black leather jacket. And we're walking, and he's somewhere, and then he's turned and following this other dude with a black leather jacket on. <laughs> oh, my like, God. Bryce, we, we, that was a cue that this young brother needs some glasses. <laughs> right. He can't see. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> was the other guy at least black? Yes, yeah. he was. Okay, all right, yes. all right. Yeah, he was. <laughs> Jeez. That's um, too funny. Yeah, um, but with <laughs> husbandhood, those cues change <coughs> daily. Yes, amen. <laughs> and amen. you just, you just, you don't, you don't know. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I think that's that's good. Okay. Yeah. Number five. <clears throat> Tiger Woods will win another major. You know what? I'm rolling. I'm rolling with that one. Yes. Uh, yeah. Even though I miss my heart saying yes, my my mind might be going. Come on, man. You know, <laughs> but my heart until Tiger hangs it up. I was like that way. I was like that with Mike Tyson. Yeah. Until yeah. Mike leaves the ring. Yeah. There's a chance that he's gonna knock that guy out because yeah. it's Mike. Yeah. Even if Mike's like, no, I, there's no reason I'm not gonna do that anymore. Yeah. He, that was a horrible Mike Tyson, by the way. <laughs> Your voice did change a little bit. <laughs> it was just, yeah. I've been done it. I've been done it a long time. Plus, I'm still scared of Mike. Right. <laughs> As you should be. He can still yeah, knock you absolutely. out. Absolutely. <laughs> So yeah, I'm I'm rolling. That's my dude. Tiger is my guy. I'm rolling with Tiger until he says I can't do it. I'm out. I think that's a good bet. It's funny about literally Jay about a week and a half before he won that last major. I was at somebody's house. We were watching a game, and they started arguing about Tiger. Mm-hmm. And th- they basically ba- Tiger is never going to win again. And these are the two guys at golf, and um. And then one guy's like, well, I'll, I'll bet you 10000 that, you know, that he'll win. And he's like, nah, nah, nah. And then when he won, he said, I'm glad I didn't take that bet. <laughs> yeah. So you never know. You never know. You know, you never know. All right. Number six, Jay Harris mm-hmm. wears the coolest socks on Sports Center. Absolutely. <laughs> Maybe you the coolest you socks some, in television. You Absolutely. Some cool socks, man. Thank you. I've seen print socks, I've seen pizza. I've, I mean, I've seen all kinds of you. stuff. Like Tribe Called Quest socks. Those yeah, oh, nice yeah, wow. Absolutely. Wow, wow. You got to have fun. Why yeah. not? Yeah. Socks yeah. are fun. <laughs> socks are fun. Ties are fun. Pocket square is fun. Yeah, yeah. Just, it's fun. Yeah. That's one thing I like about what you said, uh, listening to the interview. You said, you know, people like, oh, there, there was so much going on. And you're doing a four hour show and blah, blah, blah. You're like, dude, I get to wear a suit. Put on makeup and sit in front of a camera, mm-hmm. like and talk th- sports and, and talk about sports. I, I love I got this. To complain, <laughs> right? Yeah. <laughs> right. My dad, my dad used to always say he would watch. Like, Son, it's almost like you don't even have a job. <laughs> Thanks, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> you, wow. you up there? You you have some place to go. You want to be there? You're having fun. It's yeah. all just you you're just you're just hanging out. It's almost yeah. like you're not even working. 
I said, thanks, man. I appreciate that. We do have a good time. But yeah. it is your job. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. It's a fun job. Number seven. Fame is a gift and a curse. I'll let you know when I get famous. <laughs> I don't think you I, 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 I just you I, people know you are famous. Yeah. I mean, you can't I, tell me you don't go out, you know, to the mall and people say, hey, blah, blah, blah. not as often or as much as you would think, especially okay. at home on the road. Yeah. OK. Yeah. And, I, and I'm I ain't gonna lie when in, in, when there's like more black people. Yeah. 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 Um, but it's 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 not crazy. Okay. Um, I've never encountered anyone that was just horrible. Most people okay. have been very nice and respectful. Oh, that's great. Okay. Um, but it, it's only a curse when you're really tired and you don't feel like talking about where do you think the Mets are going to finish this year. And someone yeah. always because and I, I, I and I always turn it because most people when they ask you those questions. <coughs> They don't necessarily want to know what I have to say. Right. They just want to tell me what they, they think. think. Yeah. So I'm like, man, I, no, I don't know. What do you think? And then they just roll it off. Right. And, and that's what listen. they wanted. And I listen. <laughs> and it's great. And then yeah. we're good. And you have a good interaction. Yeah. It makes them feel good. Because that's what they wanted anyway. And I don't mind. Yeah. Because a lot of times, <clears throat> I don't know. Yeah. And I'm not ashamed to say, I don't know. Who's going to win the game? I don't, I don't know. First of all. No one knows. <laughs> Everyone is guessing. Right. You you look at the stats and the, the probability of this and that and the trends or whatnot, but once the, the the puck drops or the ball is thrown up in the air or they kick it off, no one knows. Throw all that stuff out the window. Yeah. It's two teams or two people going at each other, period. Whatever happens, happens. So it's a guess anyway. People yeah. are predicting stuff. It's a guess. Yeah. That's why there's so many big buildings in Las Vegas. Because <laughs> a lot of people right. have guessed wrong. Right. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh oh, <laughs> number eight. <laughs> it's funny. Wayman Tisdale was the greatest uh modern bass player in the last twenty years. No, not even close. Uh, oh, didn't tell me who is. I don't know. There are a lot of really good bass players. I'm Norman, you like about. Norman Brown? Oh, he's a guitar. He's he's not bass. He's guitar. Um, <clears throat> modern bass player in the last twenty years. Uh. I probably will with Pino Palladino. Okay. Because he's just a monster. Okay. Yeah. For those that don't know, uh, Jay plays a mean bass. I you know. He's a bass, he's no. a bass player. He's Christian a mean McBride bass. plays a mean bass. <laughs> That's another <laughs> one. That brother can play. He can't play. Yeah. Yeah, he can't play. Okay. And my last one. I, I chose this one because I noticed on SportsCenter, they often, especially recently, pair you with women. Mm -hmm. You do a lot of shows with women. Um, so my last question, and I, I, I've asked this one before. I always like to hear what people say. Number nine, women are smarter than men. Absolutely. <laughs> and it's not even close. Yes. Not even close. <laughs> yes. Agreed. <laughs> I said this before. I think women, well, you tell me why, why do you think that? I'll tell you what I think. <clears throat> I, they have better instincts. Yes. Um, they have better situational control because of so many of the societal things that are thrust upon them. Yeah. They don't have a choice but to be better wherever they are. Mm. Um, they um, have a lot to deal with with people, especially the, the people on TV. Mm. I mean, you they don't get a chance to have their information scrutinized because people are too busy looking at what they're wearing, mm. their hair, wow. their makeup, yeah. and you don't hear a thing that they're saying. So they have to deal with that. So they have to figure out a way to- Body type. Yeah, all that yeah. stuff. To cut through the clutter <coughs> and do what they do. Um, and, it just, and it's the whole, I think the whole maternal thing. Okay. Not putting dads down because we we no. do we do work. We do what we do. But <clears throat> moms, women, that's a that's a whole nother level, whole yeah. nother level. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you you basically encapsulated it. I just I, I always say that I feel like they have better emotional intelligence. Um, they have. Well, I'll say this: they have the capacity and ability to have um, more emotional intelligence. 
Um, sometimes it, they don't always utilize it. Um, but that, to me, it goes to the instincts, you mm-hmm. know, just sort of being able to really feel out a situation um, that may, may may not be intellectual, but it's not the intellectual is not appropriate in that in that uh, in that space. All right. Jay Harris. This was good. We're done. We're done. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> so tell me uh, or tell the people how they can follow you and learn a little bit more about your crazy life. Um, and if there are any journalists listening, uh, if if they want to, you know, reach out to you, or how, how how would they be able to do that? Jay Harris ESPN on Twitter. Okay, great. Uh, also, <clears throat> Jay Harris ESPN on Instagram. Um, I guess those would be two good ones. Okay, great. Yeah. All right. I'm on Facebook every now and then. Every now and then. Yeah. Okay. As my son says, Facebook's for old people. <laughs> 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 So one time I asked my dad, I was like, Dad, how come because I don't have, I'm not on Facebook. I said, how come you don't have Facebook? He's like, you want to see my Facebook? I was like, yeah, he takes his hat off. He's like, here's my face right here. <laughs> this is my Facebook right here. <laughs> <laughs> Pops is funny. Yeah. Anyway. All right. Thank you so much. This was great. Appreciate you, brother. Appreciate you. Finally, we we're glad we got this, you know, finally got this done. Yeah. Government name. <laughs> yes, there will be a beatdown after this recording goes off. I will be uh, quickly running and getting the hell up out of here. <laughs> I'll sign off as I always do. The truth will set you free if you let it. Wow.